What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Monarch Legacy of Monsters season 2 predictions video this one we are finally going to be talking about the characters in the present day in particular did Lee Shaw survive and what will our return to Skull Island with King Kong entail. I love doing these monarch discussion videos man i just freaking am into that show <laughs> i hope other people are sharing my enthusiasm i really appreciate the support on these monarch videos it really means a lot to me if you guys have any thoughts or theories about monarch legacy of monsters comment those down below do you have any lingering questions after season one or any theories about where season two might head comment those down below and i might cover them in a future video until then we are going to be continuing our discussion from the last monarch speculation video in which we talked about all of the past characters and potential ways to link to the movie Kong Skull Island. In the next video, I kind of want to talk about like the characters themselves, Monarch as an organization, linking to the movie Godzilla King of the Monsters. But until then, for this one, I have a mission that I swore to you guys I would cover already. I talked about it in the last couple videos and I just got to do it by now. We've got to talk about Axis Mundi and our boy Lee Shaw. Axis Mundi is sure to return in this new season. Not only is it the newest realm in the MonsterVerse, but it's also the Monarch Legacy of Monsters original creation. It's just such an iconic part of season one that was such a massive point of the season that it's crazy if we don't. So returning to Axis Mundi is a must. We need to find out more about how the time dilation works, how there's a hollow earth and then also an Axis Mundi. Personally, my theory about that is I think the way it works is there is a, a basically a tunnel that leads to a hollow earth. And if you don't have the proper means of navigating it, you're going to get launched down one of the arcs. So when we see them go through the portals, they branch off. I think if you go through the wrong branch, you wind up in Axis Mundi. And I think that's going to really be the only way to access it. So there's not a clean way to get into Hollow Earth at the time of this show. Basically, I think there's a Earth, a Hollow Earth, and if you're going down through the tunnel but you don't really have a way to navigate it, you get stuck at this pit stop that is Axis Mundi. Whether Axis Mundi is literally a different dimension or a different spot on the planet, I'm not entirely sure yet. I kind of am leaning towards it's a new dimension or a new realm, but I don't totally know. I'll continue to talk about that and theorize about that in future videos. What do you guys think? Is Axis Mundi literally in the the earth itself like hollow earth is hollow earth is literally in the planet is axis mundi or is axis mundi a different dimension i'm curious to hear what you guys think there isn't a lot you can do on the surface yet just like with season one we're not in the year 2019 yet and so in order to not break canon in order to not jump the gun or blow the lid off of what happens in king of the monsters we can't really go too far with what the titans do on the surface otherwise we break the canon we know that at this point monarch is discovering the 17 titans and counting but that's the titans on the surface world and so if you want more titans to be in this show the titans can't be seen by the public that's why i think axis mundi could be so important maybe we'll learn that now monarch is classifying titans as the larger kaiju and has used a different name to reference the different creatures like the smaller creatures such as the ion dragon the frost vark the endoswarmer and even the big uh, boar although they wouldn't know about the boar because in king of the monsters there's 17 titans and counting those don't include things like the frost vark and it, i don't think it's because he dies in season one or that they think he dies I think it's because he's not big enough to still be qualified as a Titan in a post Oh my god Scylla and Methuselah and all these other guys exist world The Titans in Monarch Legacy of Monsters season 1 were all pretty small scale And I have a feeling that the reason they did that is because they know they can't have major giant monsters on the surface world Because well the King of the Monsters movie tells us very specifically Godzilla and the Titans have not been seen since 2014 And so you kind of can't show Godzilla or the Titans in season 1 one all that much but if you want to do a bigger budget season two you want to have more going on you want to link to the movies a little better well there are some ways to get the titans back involved of course you need them they're going to be there certainly king kong and godzilla will show up but other than that you need some other monsters to pop up and there is a way to do that very naturally in godzilla king of the monsters we're told that there are 17 titans and counting that have been discovered by monarch most of which were in hibernation is the key line of that movie obviously we 
know, some of the Titans aren't asleep. Like King Kong is awake. He's up and doing stuff. He's around. Godzilla is awake. He's up and doing stuff. He's around. And that's really about it. Other than that, all the rest we know about are asleep. But I feel like that'd be a weird thing to specify to Mark Russell, a guy who's worked for Monarch for years, who already knows about both King Kong and Godzilla. He'd have no question about if some of them are awake or not, other than that if Monarch had to put some of them into hibernation and put them into containment. So we have a couple possibilities here. First of all, we can still meet and kill as many Titans as we want. Godzilla King of the Monsters novelization opens up with a dead Titan body washing ashore, and that was the result of Godzilla frying a dude at sea. You could easily just have Godzilla kill a monster in the Arctic or fight a monster in a remote part of the world, go back to Alaska, have Godzilla beat the snot out of a guy in the middle of an icy plain, go back to a desert and have Godzilla fight a monster or have a monster pop up. There's ways to show the monsters and kill them off so that they don't have to be part of that 17 and counting. Also, you could have smaller monsters, but I don't think they'd still be titans at that point. You could have smaller monsters that pop up. Other than that, you can also show one or two, I wouldn't do it with too many, but one or two titans from the King of the Monsters 17 and counting list. We need to see more of these guys in live action. Show some of those monsters being put into containment. Show Nakika or something like that. That could be a very easy one. There's other titans in the King of the Monsters mythos and legacy that you could show in this show and have them being put to bed at sea or put to bed in some remote part of the world just as long as they wind up in the position they're in in the movie Godzilla King of the Monsters which it's not that hard to figure it out one search of the Wikizilla wiki will tell you exactly where the Titans are and if that's all you have to do in the if in your normal person I can only imagine that legendary supposed mythology team definitely knows the locations of the Titans pre King of the Monsters that's a really easy way to involve some Titans and a really cool way to build on that movie also you can have as many Titans as you want pop up on Skull Island you can have as much Titan action as you want. King Kong can beat up and kill skull crawlers and mother long legs and all sorts of other creatures. Invent new monsters for Kong to kill. Uh, start adapting some of the comic book material and maybe throw a sort of Kamazots creature in there. Although this is a little too early for Kamazots to appear. Kamazots is no way can tell Ghidorah wakes him up. So, you know, at that point, that's more of a season three type storyline. But you could still throw in a monster or two on Skull Island that Kong beats up. Actually, in the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my theories about Skull Island in a way to have the Skull Island storyline link with the main storyline of the show, The Outside World. And I think a good way to do that would be to have a monster pop up on Skull Island. That's a big deal, a big monster that you need to take on. I'd love to see that. Also, Axis Mundi. That is the thing Axis Mundi can do for the show. Axis Mundi, you can have literally as many monsters as you want in there because anything that happens down there has no bearing on the surface world. So just throw monsters left and right into Axis Mundi. They can be small. They can be big. They can be medium. You can have yourself find a 164 styled Showa monster. You can have yourself find another 30 foot styled monster or another 15 foot or another 9 foot boar. You can have all sorts of stuff or you can have a giant 400 foot tall dragon flying around there. You can do a lot down there and not conflict with the movies at all. And then if the characters discover the hollow earth, which I don't really think they do, but if they do, then you can have even more titans. I mean, one potential theory, and I'm not really going to get into it too much because I don't think it's likely at all, is that Lee Shaw wound up getting ejected into the hollow earth at the end of the episode. If there's a way that Lee Shaw wound up getting sucked down the wrong vent of the portal to the surface world and wound up getting thrown into the hollow earth itself, I guess he could pop up in the movies and then he could be walking around there in the movies and maybe a post credit scene for the new empire could show him surviving or something that feels like a bit of a deep cut for a post credit scene for one of these monsterverse movies. Then you could have as many titans as you want or if Apex somehow discovers the hollow earth which they can't yet then, then you get more titans but that's getting into like a lot of continuity errors, so I hope they don't do that. I think the season will culminate with two massive reveals that will shake up the foundations of where the show heads. I think, first of all, they'll receive a signal from Axis Mundi towards the end of the show, or maybe the middle of the show, alerting them to the survival of Lee Shaw. I don't think Shaw's going to be a major player in season two. I could see them saving him for the finale, getting him out in the finale, or I could see us cutting away to him and Axis Mundi every now and then after we learn that he's still alive, or maybe even they get him out at the mid-season point and then he's back in the show after the mid-season point. But I think Shaw is definitively alive. I mean, Shaw has already survived two falls to Axis Mundi itself, so this fall within Axis Mundi is not going to be enough to kill him, especially because he's already in the suction portal. It's not like he's going to fall and splatter on the ground. He's already being pulled in, so the fall would be lessened. I think his death is also just so vague. The Monsterverse is not about vague deaths. Let me roll the supercut again.
The MonsterVerse doesn't do vague deaths, and his death or his sacrifice is so ambiguous, they don't leave it ambiguous unless they're gonna bring him back. Shaw falls through basically another portal, so he's gonna be fine. Gravity was pulling on him weird, it's not that much of a stretch to say he lived. He also was left with the Gamma Signaler. There's no reason that they would knock the Gamma Signaler off unless he needed to use it in Season 2. So he'll be fine, I think he's gonna re-rig that thing up and go. Now there is a way to pivot this and get Shaw into the films, you could easily say that Shaw winds up getting sucked back through the portal after them and spit out into the future of Monarch Legacy of Monsters, where he's missed enough time to catch back up with the movies. The reason I don't think they're going to do that is because you'd have to explain a lot in the films. Otherwise, you expect your audience has seen this show, which is on the most obscure streaming service, and that's not really going to be a likely scenario. I don't think Shaw is going to pop up in the movies. I also just think that kind of removes the main core draw and appeal of the show from the show. Kurt Russell was a huge draw for season one and I don't think there's any chance they're gonna get rid of him for season two so I think Shaw's fine I think he's down there he'll repair the gamma signaler he'll alert them on the surface that he's still down there he just needs someone to come get him and that would be a really good arc for Keiko and Hiroshi to go through in season two being like okay we've got to get this guy back we've got to do it this also gives the opportunity to have Apex develop a prototype heave or, or develop or start studying ways to enter into Hollow Earth and they can do that through Access Monday they could either visit Access Monday itself to gain data on how that place works, learning about the fact that this is a gateway to the next world, but how do we get to the next world? Or they could start to develop technology that can resist those sort of time warping gravitational effects, and they could slowly come up with the Hollow Earth anti-gravity vehicle, a vehicle that is able to survive the gravity inversions and also navigate without the time dilation being too extreme. I think that's a really cool opportunity that we could start to see Apex slowly develop the technologies of the movies. That'd be great. I think the other major major groundbreaking reveal at the end of season one will be that we will be in the year 2019 and I do believe this season will end with probably oh my god they've just awakened Ghidorah and then we're like oh well we know what happens next and that way in season three you can pick up season three post King of the Monsters see how it has impacted our characters and move forward from there at least that's exactly what I would do <laughs> I don't want to jump past King of the Monsters in season two and I don't think we're going to that feels really stunting for the growth of this show what do you guys think? How do you feel about this? Do you think Lee Shaw survived? There's not a doubt in my mind that if Kurt Russell wants to come back, that Lee Shaw survived. The only way Lee Shaw didn't survive is if, for some reason, Kurt Russell's too expensive for next season. I don't see that being the case. He was such a major draw for season one that removing him from the show is killing off a big viewership for the show. But what do you guys think? What do you think about that? Comment down below and let me know. Where do you think Axis Monday is? What do you think is going to be happening with Monarch in the public? And do you think Lee Shaw survived? Also, when do you think we're going to arrive at the doorstep of King of the Monsters mid-season before the season even starts or at the very end of the season like I do. Thank you guys so much. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. It is through the support of the Patreon that I'm able to do videos like this for you guys and by supporting the Patreon you are directly supporting this channel. Through the Patreon you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.